the places run amok. It's a disaster versus a hostile environment. There's something intentional and something really, really awful happening in the workplace. So I'm going to give you five concrete signs of what would be considered a legally hostile environment where you have options. And, and I'm really doing this for those of you who feel like you're trapped and you can't get out. So I'm going to talk about how you would get out. I want to address those fears and those doubts head on today. But let's talk about the signs. One, a, a lot of uh, so-called jokes. Maybe they are considered or they're being positioned or portrayed as just off color or just, you know, oh, we're just joking around, but they are discriminatory towards someone's age, gender, religion, race, or sex. Two, name calling. And again, this gets the little wink, wink, oh, we're just kidding around. But it is a cutting tactic designed to put someone in their place. Designed to shun someone, designed to push someone out. Then there's serious stuff like verbal abuse, verbal threats, physical threats. I mean, some of you go, what? I, I'm telling you, we've shared some of these stories on the show. If you've got one of these nightmare situations you want us to, to shed light on or or just share the story, ask at KenColma.com, email me. But when we, we, we actually reported on a story not too long ago. It was from one of our listeners and viewers that said they left their company after a leader, a manager, struck another employee in the face at a Christmas party. Punched somebody. And it was laughed off or it was minimized as, well, he just had a little too much to drink. Are you kidding me? It's, it's, it's mind-numbing what goes on in our workplaces where so-called leaders don't want to deal with the situation or allow it because they just don't care. Unwanted romantic or sexual attention. This happens all the time. This is hostile. Hostile. And then shared content or images that are inappropriate for work setting, uh, designed, again, to make someone feel very uncomfortable, or just a blatant disregard for decency, which, again, in the, today's world, decency and just common sense morality has now been made fun of under the guise of, hey, it's a big tent. So what do you do if you're stuck in one of these situations? Because let me be very clear. I understand that this is your livelihood. This is your paycheck. This is your provision. I understand this. But the reality is, is that there are opportunities. And if you continue to put yourself in this situation, by the way, it's not your fault. None of this is your fault, these type of environments. You didn't create them. You are there. But you don't have to put up with it for very long. So let's talk about what does the eject button look like because what I don't want you to do, unless you are in physical harm, is to leave without an opportunity. But if you are in a truly hostile, dangerous environment, you leave today. I mean today. Boom, I'm out. These other circumstances, you could you can just bite your upper lip. You could you could you could press it. But if if you are being uh sexually harassed, physically threatened, uh any of that, you're gone. Because we, we are in a world now where you have options. You can go find AJOB for a short term, but you've got to protect yourself. You've got to protect your physical and your mental well-being. So let's just talk about some of the non-emergency situations. Number one, what do you got to do to get out of this or see what your options are? Is really, you're probably going to leave, but I want you to at least have the options. What would need to happen? Number one, you got to confront the person that's the problem. A lot of times these people are allowed to continue doing what they do because nobody confronts them. They don't go right after them and go, hey, stop doing it. Knock it off. It's like the bully on the playground. The reason the bully keeps bullying people on the playground is because nobody's ever looked at the bully and said, knock it off. And if you don't, I'm going to punch you right in the nose. Uh, you know, I'm old school, so this will offend somebody. But I told both my boys, if someone is physically bullying you at school, you give them one warning, and then the second time, there's no warning. 
There's no, if you do this again, I'm going to punch you in the nose. No, the next time they even get close to you and they start reaching out, you knock them right in the schnoz. It's over. It's over after that. But we have to stand up to bullies. We're not going around punching people in the workplace. That's not what I'm saying. But what I'm saying is if you looked at somebody and said, let me tell you something, I know what's going on with you. You got something going on in your life and you're acting like a big old bully and I'm not dealing with your crap anymore. So you want to play? We'll go play in the principal's office. I'm going to drag your butt into HR or to our leader if you if you do this one more time. So this is your get out of jail free card. Take it. That's what you do. If they don't stop, then it's up to leaders. And if leaders don't fix it, they're liable. Go get yourself a good employment attorney. You fight for yourself. We got a bunch of cowards in this world. We have men and women who have the strength to say, I'm not going to be treated this way. I'm not going to allow anybody to treat me this way. I'm going to fight. Watch the cowards back up. Why does this matter? Because your life is too short and you spend too much time at work to put yourself in a truly hostile environment. Take your freedom back. Stand up for yourself and watch what happens. Coming up, people who stayed and got paid next. So you just landed the new job. Congratulations. You've made it past the interviews and now it's time to onboard with excellence. That's why I created How to Stand Out at Your New Job. This free checklist will help you succeed from day one and may even help you get promoted. These practical steps set you up to add value, help your team win, exceed your leader's expectations, and ultimately set you up for a successful transition. To get started, just go to kencoleman.com slash new. Welcome back to the Ken Coleman Show. Have you ever noticed a moment when you discover something new? How it changes your entire context. It's, it's fascinating how that happens. I'll give you an example. Went to my first rap concert last night. Uh, and boy, oh boy, did it change my perspective. I kid you not. Uh, never seen Kendrick Lamar. Never listened to any of his music. I went to see him. And I got to tell you, the guy's an amazing entertainer. Um, there'll be more content coming out of that concert. Uh, I stood the entire time. I was exhausted. You know, I was just, you know, I'm like, you know, everybody's standing, so I got to stand. Uh, but but this is an example. Discover a new artist. And I got to tell you, change my perspective on a lot of things. It was fascinating. And so today, I enter in the world with a new perspective. Well, this could be true of a new job. Maybe there is an awesome job out there in an awesome place. And for the first time in your professional career, you realize, wait a second, I can actually do work that I'm good at, work that I love, and create results that matter to me in a place where they value me and they develop me and they want to help me have a better life. This is why I endorse ZipRecruiter. The best job site in America. They do all the work for you. Signs up. You sign up rather in just a few minutes, and they're out there pitching. It's free. It doesn't cost you a dime. I'm not selling you folks anything. I'm trying to help you have better perspective. ZipRecruiter.com slash Ken. ZipRecruiter.com slash Ken. Let me tell you something. That guy, Kendrick Lamar, I don't know anything about him. Okay, I've never seen an interview. But let me tell you something. He's on a tour. And to do what he did for over two hours, I told my son in the car, let me tell you something. That dude has got amazing enthusiasm for what he does. To, to do what he did, song after song, and all you could say this of any great artist who's just going after it, but I mean, it's unbelievable energy and love for what he has, and he completely enthralled the entire audience. I was standing there watching everybody else worship this guy. And I was watching the scene. Fascinating. More on what I learned from my first Kendrick Lamar concert. In fact, that'll be some teaching, whether it's this week or next week. I've got lots of thoughts. It's fascinating stuff. Uh, really, really interesting. But um, let's get to it here. Here we go. Um, it wasn't worth it. Despite lucrative offers, these workers kept their jobs during the Great Resignation. And they say it paid off. 
with promotions and camaraderie, which is a fancy word for connections. We talked about that last week. People want connections and relationships in their work. So this is from Yahoo, a story. Uh, Devin Walsh is an account executive at a PR firm. Was hired full-time following an internship at the start of COVID. This is fascinating. So the Great Resignation was was a, a period about halfway through 2020, and it's carried on up to where we stand now. And just to give you an idea, there's been four-plus million people have quit their jobs each month over the last 12 months. That's a staggering number. So we're north of 50 million people have changed their jobs in the last year. And it's because of the great salary rush. So economists and news people are calling it the great resignation. So I've been calling it that. So this is fascinating. So during the great resignation, she received countless offers on LinkedIn for her roles that paid as much as $30,000 more than what she was making. Now, some of you are going, ah, it's crazy. I wouldn't do it. Hang on for the rest of the story. Well, Devin said, she said the money wasn't worth risking going into a negative work environment. So she's in a healthy culture and the career growth that she had already had, and she expected more career growth. So she looked at the temptation of a bigger paycheck and she went, it's a little too risky. There's no guarantees. I'm growing where I am. I'm in a healthy environment. Here's what she said. I think you'd rather be happy every day and work with people that you truly respect and help you grow rather than having maybe what is very tempting, more money. And what she doesn't say here is, but not having a great environment, not being around people that care for me and value me. It's real. More than a quarter of people who switched jobs said that they regretted quitting their previous roles. 42% said their new roles have not lived up to their expectations. This is a June jobless survey. Um, Walsh said uh, she was able to uh, develop her career by staying. She received several raises and was promoted multiple times in the last two years. Because she stayed, it paid off. That's the story. How about another one? Jessica Fonseca. COO of Pink Shark PR uh, said that she stayed at her company because she valued the culture. She said, I didn't see any purpose in le leaving. I get hit by headhunters constantly. But I didn't see the point because I was enjoying what I was doing for a company that I felt appreciated for doing what I do. That's why I wrote the book Paycheck to Purpose because the paycheck wears off. Pretty fascinating stuff. Um, and so here's the takeaway. Why do I share the story? You know, there's a, uh, there's a great sign in the locker room of my beloved Michigan Wolverines. And it says, those who stay will be champions. And so what they're saying is, is look, you're going to be a part of something special. And, you know, there's something to be said for when there is all of this temptation to leave your company where you love your work and you love the culture. And these two women are stories where they stayed because they love their work and they love their culture and they got rewarded. Has it occurred to you that when everybody else leaves, if you are in a healthy culture, those leaders are going to go, all right, these people stayed. We need them more than we've ever needed them. And we're going to reward them when we get through the storm. Now, that will not happen in a healthy culture. I understand that. But you know if you're in a healthy culture or not. You just do. And, and, and let me just give you real quick, we'll move on to the next story I want to cover. But there, there are two ingredients, if, if you're truly struggling to articulate or confirm for yourself, am I in a healthy culture? I'm going to give you two, the two little nuggets here. This will absolutely help you. This is simple. Number one, is there a pattern of your company developing people? Developing you, developing people. That means not just your basic training for your job, but additional development. Are they investing in you beyond what your job description is? Is there a history where they develop people? They develop, meaning they pour into, and then watch, here's the second piece, do they promote people? So the question is, does my company develop people? Does my company promote people? If they develop people and promote people, I got great news for you. You are in a healthy culture. 
And so the flip side of this is if you're looking at going to work for another company, you got to ask the question in the interview process. And don't forget, I've said this a hundred times. I'll say it a hundred more times. The job interview process is just as much for you as it is for the company. Think of this as dating. You're not just trying to get a girl to say yes. You got to figure out, do you want to ask her? Right? So we got to think about this stuff. And so you asking questions and doing homework to say, hey, is this a culture? Because the job could look great on paper. But it's your job as a potential employee to dig and find out, does the company that you want to work for develop people and promote people? That's the single factor that you're looking for. Because that tells you they value people. They don't just see people as a commodity to move in and out. All right, next story here. I got to get to this quick uh, because I care deeply about what's going on in our country's classrooms. We're not preparing our kids for their future the way we ought to be. It's a shame. And part of the problem is the very people we rely on, we're burning them out. The Washington Post just recently reported on this story. Uh a uh, report uh, July 15th examined teacher retention in Maryland and Northern Virginia around the D.C. area. The data showed a jump in resignations following last year, particularly Arlington County. Resignations are up 96%. The district, 52% above average. These aren't isolated. The Wall Street Journal reported in June that 300,000 public school teachers and other staff left the field because of being burned out from the pandemic and not being able to teach these kids. Wake up, Americans. we got to do something about this. Did you know that just like a product, you have a personal brand? It's the image or impression others form about you based on your interactions. And whether we realize it or not, our personal brand impacts opportunities to grow in our careers. That's why our team created the Personal Brand Survey. It's free and it will give you personal and professional feedback so you can own your strengths and uncover any blind spots holding you back. To get started, go to kencoleman.com slash brand. Coaching you to have a competitive edge to make more money and experience more meaning in your work. This is the Ken Coleman Show. So excited that you are with us. I uh, just want to say uh, a hi to our YouTube crazies. Uh, these are the men and women that are in the chat room that are watching live uh, as we are live right now at uh, 1220 Central Standard Time. Um, I got to point this out. Uh, we were talking earlier in the program Um well, I'm always, not early, I'm always talking about this. I mean, it feels like every day. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Cole P. says he's been punched at work. Uh, he said it was in the office. Thank God he works from home now. How, you see my point? How in the world does a guy punch somebody and he gets to keep his job? I mean, I, 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 I you know, losing your cool on somebody in the office uh, and, and just being a jerk, to me, that's not grounds for being fired. But you punch somebody, you're done. It's over. You don't get a second chance on that one. You should get a second chance to work somewhere else, and maybe we'll give you a nice reference. And, and uh, you know, if you prove that you're, you know, sorry. Goodness gracious sakes alive. What is happening? You know, and, and, and I'm going to tell you this, just a little side note. Those of you that are leaders who allow problem people to stay, can I just tell you, you do it because of fear. You're afraid that if you let them go and they're a high performer, that it's going to end up hurting you, hurting the company, and you'll lose your job, as opposed to realize, realizing that it's always good to cut out the problem child. Always. So, interesting stuff. Okay. Um, I want to address uh, what is now becoming, a, a feels like a regular headline, this is from a Yahoo article, their Yahoo Finance page. Tech's great layoffs. The media loves to make a huge deal out of this. Uh, I was on Fox Business News last week addressing this issue. Uh, so I want to address it. So, yes, uh, there are some big tech companies that are laying people off. Um, it is not because uh, in all the situations 
that uh, they're all in dire financial situation. It is tech companies, uh, it, you know, for instance, uh, there were a couple that uh, I talked about on the air uh, on this show and then on Fox Business. Um, what's the company where you, uh, oh, Etsy, you know, like store, was it Etsy? No, it wasn't. It was somebody else. Shopify, thank you. Goodness gracious, folks. Shopify, right? We saw Carvana lay people up. So what happened was is these tech companies staffed up because there was so much uh, buyer demand. And so now with reports of recession, uh, inflation going on, people are pulling their spending habits back. So these tech companies that are related to that, they, they hired up and they hired too much or they thought that, well, the consumer demand will stay at this level and it hasn't. So they've got to lay people off. This is normal business operation. Doesn't mean that the that the the, the economy is like exploding, okay, uh, in a negative way. But the U.S. Department of Labor has claimed has reported that claims have jumped to an unexpected eight month high. Yes, that's true, because unemployment filings were way down. And keep in mind, we're at three point six percent unemployment. We'll see what the numbers are as they come out shortly. So we'll see July numbers and we'll see what's going on. But as of right now, that's where we are. Facebook um, uh, put out a poor earnings report. And prior to that, they sent several memos to their teams wanting a warning, rather, of job cuts. Now, I've got some real testimonies in this story that I wanted to share. Uh, these are real people that have been laid off in the tech sector. This is a Coinbase program manager. Now, Coinbase is, uh, is a hot mess. It's a dumpster fire. That's one of those crypto companies. This guy's name is Miguel, and he said he was one of 1,100 employees laid off. We reported on that uh, earlier this year. Um, in the weeks prior, many employees, including Miguel, asked if layoffs were imminent. But management told them to keep chugging along as though things are normal. I think that's wrong. I, 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 I think you could say, you know what? Uh, I don't know everything. I don't know who's going to be, but it probably wouldn't be a bad idea to be prepared for layoffs. I think that's a decent thing. Well, you say, well, Ken, they're not allowed to say that. Well, okay, then let's use code language, shall we? If you as a manager know that layoffs are coming and somebody looks at you, you don't get to skip being a human. I understand that you may not be able to say things uh, from a legal standpoint, but you can, you can hint around enough to go, you know what, it's always smart for someone to be prepared. They can read through that. They're not idiots. Give them a chance. Uh, Netflix copywriter. Uh, they found out, this is how they began to, to understand what was going on. They found out their manager Slack had been deactivated. Yo, that's a little weird. My leader Slack, not there. Did he get fired? She get fired? What happened? So then she made some calls. Didn't get anything back. Finally got a call back. And in the call back, uh, oh yeah, um, you are being laid off. We're going to give you two weeks pay. I, I, again, I, I I just don't know where the decency has gone. And I, I, uh, I got to tell you, leaders, if you're in a management position, you can't forget that at one point, maybe you were in a position where you wanted some communication. How would you want to be treated? Well, corporate says, I don't care what corporate says. I really don't. I think you got to be a human being because corporate's looking at a piece of paper and they're not thinking about people. And, and your job is to think about people and treat people the way you would want to be treated in the situation. There's always a better way and it's the human dignity way. Meaning I want to give dignity to the people that I lead. I, I want to treat them the way that I would want to be treated. Uh, here's another story. And I, and I share this one, not as bad news, but I share this to the audience, those of you who would consider yourselves caregivers. So if you're listening and watching right now and you go, you know what, I, I'm looking for a job, I'm looking for some opportunity, and I don't have a degree, I don't have a bunch of qualifications, but I know that I love caring for people. I don't share this as bad news, I share this as an opportunity, but it is a crisis. But a crisis has opportunity attached to it. Listen to this. Nursing homes across the U.S. are facing closure risks amid staff shortages. Nearly 60% of nursing homes in the U.S. are operating at a financial loss, and nearly three-quarters are concerned about possible closures due to staffing shortages. Now, it blows my mind that in 
the greatest nation in the world, that we can't figure out how to take care of our elderly? I, I don't understand it. A survey conducted last month across 759 facilities found 60% of nursing homes had their staffing situations worsened since the start of the year. With 87% facing moderate or high staffing shortages. A large majority of the nursing home surveyed said they'd hired temporary staff and they've limited new admissions into the homes to hope to cope with the shortages. 99% said they percent had said they asked current staff to work overtime. 73% of nursing homes said they were concerned about possibly having to close. And operating costs in nursing homes have increased by an average of 41% over the past year, with 59% saying they're operating at a loss. So I'm not going to get into the big government and all the red tape and all the health care crap that make this situation a reality. But here's what I know. If you are a stay-at-home mom or... Maybe you're in your 50s and 60s and you're healthy and you're looking to make some money and you don't want to get a college degree, you don't do that, but you just want to care for people you love giving care, I would be looking at my local nursing homes. Now, I don't know what the pay is, but my point is I'd be kicking the tires to see because they are in staffing shortages all across the country. And if you can love on people and just meet people where they are, um, you're talking about really making the difference in your life and in the lives of the elderly and their families. Because the sad part of all this is when a nursing home is understaffed, do you know who takes the brunt of that? The patients, the residents. And certainly all of the employees who are there because they love caring for others. And you think about how discouraging it's got to be when you want to come in and just love on people and care for them but you're stressed out, burned out because you have no help. It's a great opportunity for a lot of people. Even in a part-time situation, I'd be looking at that. And you don't want to talk about doing good work. That is good work. If the thought of attending a networking event makes you break out in hives, you're not alone. And I'll let you in on a secret. Networking in the traditional sense doesn't work, but genuine connection is all about relationships. That's why we created networking the right way. This free guide is the low pressure, high impact way to overcome the awkwardness, build real relationships, and turn your connections into opportunities. To get the guide, go to kencolman.com slash network. Welcome back to the Ken Coleman Show. Shout out to all of you that are watching live on YouTube. Hit that thumbs up button. Uh, I see the amount of people that are watching. And I see the thumbs up button. And I see that we have a deficit. Mm -hmm. What if I just sit here and awkwardly stare at the screen until all of you that are watching hit the like button? That'd be awkward for everybody, wouldn't it? Good news is I'm not going to do that. Uh, Cheryl's up in Alexandria, Virginia. Cheryl, you're on the Ken Coleman Show. Whoa. Hey, Cheryl. Hey, Ken. What oh. a surprise. Thank you for taking my call. Well, you bet. <laughs> What's going on today? So just to summarize a little background, I have been with the same company since 2015. Mm -hmm. In 2018, um, I, uh, quote, retired with my husband. And uh, the marriage did not work out, but I'm my sorry. old, yeah, but my current company, the, the one that I had been employed with back in 2015, offered me a position, not the same one. I took a pay cut and worked the job, worked real hard. Uh, they, they offered me another position on top of what I was doing now kind of like being voluntold to, you know, additional duties, mm -hmm. which turns out to be two jobs, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. And I'm trying to figure out how to ask for more money. And I, I've, I'm a, a long time listener, first time caller. So I'm aware of, you know, ask, not flat out asking for a raise, but I think my company is pretty direct in that way. Mm -hmm. But also 
letting them know that my current workload is just unsustainable. Yeah. Well, you gotta let, you gotta let them know because if you don't let them know, um, you're just kind of toiling away in this anonymity that only hurts you, you know, and we're going to find out real quick how serious they are, uh, about, about trying to address the issue and how serious they are about you, you know? And so Mm -hmm. I would, I would sit down and the only question I have is, is, is I don't know, you didn't give me much detail about the conversation when they gave you this, this new job about what compensation would look like. Was there anything about that discussed? The discussion on compensation was not even discussed. Uh, basically, they said this new role would entail, you know, filling out a bunch of forms, and it really isn't that at all. It's a lot more to it than that. I'm, you know, I'm uh, interpreting regulation. I'm giving mandatory training of stuff that I would never expect it to do. Yeah. I enjoy the challenge. I think there's a lot of room for growth and development. Yeah. But no discussion on, you know, the growth and development of the job or even the job duties right. themselves. How long ago did you say yes to this? Uh, January of 2021. Yeah. So in some ways, Cheryl, you shot yourself in the foot into where my normal advice isn't going to hold. You're right. My normal mm-hmm. advice is let's talk about a growth plan. But I, I hope you've learned your lesson. In the future, you don't ever entertain a conversation about a new position without talking about your financial growth with it. Because mm-hmm. now it's been over yeah. a year. And I think you right. just got to sit down and go, hey, here's the situation. I want to be here. Um, I took the opportunity because I wanted to show my value. Uh, I've been in it now X amount of months uh, or I, over a year. And here's where it is. The workload isn't sustainable. And the job is different than what it was described. And I'm willing to roll up my sleeves but I never got a raise. I should have asked you at the time what what the comp structure was going to look like for my performance. Mm-hmm. And I want to have that conversation right now. I think you can do that with humility and hunger and just kind of take yeah. some responsibility on yourself. Say, I should have asked. But now right. we are where we are. And so I'm really coming to you for two reasons. Number one, the, workloads, the workload issue's got to be addressed, and I need your help. So instead of, you know, come to the, come to the table with a few suggestions maybe. Mm-hmm. And then say, but I need your input on these suggestions. So you're not coming and complaining. You're coming with solutions. But then you right. get, but, I, you, but you, you know, from a humility standpoint, you're saying, hey, I want your input. And then after that, you got to go. And I, and I really want to talk about my compensation because we got to fix the workload issue. But I, I, I feel like I should have asked at the time with this change, what would my growth path look like? Not just in responsibilities, but financial growth path. And I just want to be able to have a conversation about it and see where you guys are, see what your thoughts are on this. So that's a posture of humility, but there's some confident clarity there. They realize, hey, they know what you're asking for. And you have to be okay to know that you have a lot of options out there. And they need to keep you, and they probably want to keep you. That's my presumption. So that puts you in a really good place. So be very clear and use that posture. I think it's going to turn out well for you. Are you wondering if you should leave your current job or stay put? You're not alone. That's why we created the Should I Quit My Job quiz. In just five minutes or less, this quiz will help you determine if you're at the right company and if you're in the right role. If you need to make a move, you'll even get practical next steps to keep you moving forward. Listen, stuck is a choice, and life is too short not to do what you were created to do. To take the quiz, go to kencoleman.com slash quiz. Coaching you to have a competitive edge, to make more money and experience more meaning in New York. By the way, folks, you're in a competition whether you realize it or not. Whether that's competing against the you of yesterday or competing against people on the inside and the outside. It needs to be healthy, it needs to be classy, but you're competing. Because I don't care what you've been told, no matter how old you are, I don't care what you've been told that, you know, well, there are no winners and losers in life and we shouldn't keep score. I got news for you. There are winners and there are losers, and everybody's keeping score, except for youth sports at some level. 
Uh, I'll never forget the time I showed up to coach my first soccer team. I was a college kid. And uh, it was the YMCA in Lynchburg, Virginia. So we were having our coaches meeting. And this insidiousness has been going on for some time. This is 1992, the fall of 1992. I'm going to get back to the show, Alex, I, but I'm on a little bit of a, a squirrel rant right now, okay? Because this needs to be heard. So we have our coaches meeting, and the director gets done and says, oh, 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 sorry. One other thing, coaches. We're trying out something new this year. So this is like, to me, I feel like I'm on the front edge of this deal. We're not going to keep score in the five- and six-year-old league. We've just had some feedback from parents and kids, so we've decided that for the five- and six-year-olds, six six year olds, we're not going to keep score. And I was a coach in the five- and six-year-old league. Now, I had a profound problem with this. But I, I quickly had at least enough maturity as an 18-year-old to realize this decision has been made. But this needs, uh, this calls for civil disobedience is what this calls for. So I'll never forget first game and I'm wrestling with this. Do I want to be this guy? And at halftime, we're down three or four to nothing. So I gathered my little kids around me. I'm like, all right, really proud of you. Cause I mean, it's group ball. I said, I'm really proud of you. You're playing hard, but we're down four to nothing. We got to score five goals to win. And we lost, and I told them what the score was. We lost. And they all looked at me, and none of them were shattered psychologically. None of them. They were okay. A few of them hung their heads. A few of them picked their nose. That's kind of the deal. Uh, but they got to learn that life is keeping score. And I'm here to remind you that professionally, people are keeping score, and you are competing. I'm going to help you win. How am I going to do that? I've assembled a group of coaches. Very excited about this. This is a pilot program. We're almost full, uh, but those are. This is for those of you who you've got some. You've got you've got the money to be able to do it. It's not crazy expensive, but it's a commitment. It's an investment in yourself. And these are world class career coaches that have been certified, been doing it a long time, and I've asked them to join me uh, to create this program, the Ramsey Career Coaching Program. Um, and this is going to help you grow personally so that you can grow professionally and grow financially. Go to KenColeman.com slash coaching, KenColeman.com slash coaching. Uh, you see what I did there, Alex? See, I went out there. You thought, what's, what's Ken doing? He's telling a story, and I brought it all back home. Got to keep score because if you aren't, you're the only one that isn't. That's the news for you. And by the way, if you coach a youth team, I don't care what the league says. Tell the kids what the score is. It's good for them. They'll be all right. Julia's up next in St. Louis, Missouri. Julia, you're on the Ken Coleman Show. Hello. Hi, Julia. What's up? Hey. Um, thank you so much for taking my call. Um, so I need I need some advice on um, how to pick a really good career that will be uh, a best growing choice. Um, and so I would like you to advise me on that. Please. Yeah, you got a couple of ideas you've been thinking about? So, master's degree in, in MBA um, with the emphasis of healthcare administration and then counseling. Okay, which way would you go there? Because you just that's a mouthful. Health administration is one clear <laughs> path, and counseling is a very different clear path. That's correct, yes. So, so I'm, very, I'm very confused. Um, I know with the healthcare administration is it's a popular degree and it gets paid really well. So with the counseling, it's kind of like, I, I don't feel like I love to socialize with people and to kind of help them, give them some advice, um, you know, to better their mental health. However, I don't have the patience of sitting down and listening to people's problems. Oh, hold um, on. There we go. <laughs> uh, first of all, I love that you were really honest. Oh, okay. Thank you. <laughs> Because, listen to me, that statement right there means that counseling is off the table. You will never enjoy that. You just said, I don't really like, I don't have the patience to sit with people, and I don't, I don't really enjoy sitting with people. You're a get it, get it done kind of gal. You're not a sit there yeah. and, li yeah. So counseling would suck for you. <laughs> I'm serious. The fact that you just laid it out so clearly, you got to listen to that. 
You don't, I don't recommend that anybody do any work that they go, well, I don't enjoy it, but it pays well. Yeah. Well, the, the thing with the counseling is, is that most of the time people, they go to your sessions or whatnot, you know, and you give them all these wonderful advices of how to manage their mental health needs but they end up not doing it. So to me, I, I rather probably, um, I guess, tell people what to do and they do it as a manager, maybe. No, so I got to tell I, you, I, I got to <laughs> tell you. So we know counseling's off the table because everybody in the audience just heard what you said. Yeah, I don't like sitting there listening to people's problems. Okay, uh, <laughs> you should not be a counselor. And that's not bad. That's just who you are. And then the way you talked about, you were like, well, I could have get an MBA and go into healthcare because, well, I mean, you know, it kind of pays well. Your heart's not in managing a team of people in a healthcare environment either. True or false? Say it. True. True. That's True, just a yeah. good job that you think it's a good job. The problem is if you don't love the work, this is why I talk about the three elements that you that, that are in, required for you to know if you are doing what you were created to do. That in that sweet spot is talent. That's what you do best. Passion, work you love mission results that you care about. Another way of saying it is, what do I value? Mm -hmm. Well, that's not healthcare. You, I think you got coach written all over you. I feel, I feel like you're a teacher, coach, instructor. I don't mean, I'm not putting you in this elementary school class. I'm saying just functionally, you said it a minute ago. I love when somebody's so direct. Here's what you said. You said, yeah. I like telling people what to do. Yeah. But you didn't say yeah. that from an authoritative, bossy way. You said that, yeah. like, I like showing people what to do. Yes. You're an instructor, a guide. True or false? That is very true. Well, that's why I do what I do. I just <laughs> listen to people. All I did is listen to you. So here's your homework assignment. This is really simple. You should not be dealing with any more confusion because the antidote to confusion is clarity. And we just got really clear that you will thrive in a position where you are functionally spending time guiding, instructing, and encouraging people to do what they're supposed to do. True or false? That is correct. I just gave you a 30,000 foot view of your job description. Do you agree with that? that yes, I agree. So you were looking for jobs where you can spend the majority of your day communicating, listen, communicating to instruct, communicating, to encourage. That's correct, yes. All right. I think we've solved this issue. <laughs> so I'm not kidding. So your next steps are, I'm looking out there for roles that certainly can be in management and leadership, but they must be defined by that. So you might do well in corporate training. You might thrive there. Right. Uh, but listen, I, I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to poo-poo your options that you mentioned, but I, I, I shared on this show recently, Alex, this is where I wish I could remember the show, but we showed, we shared some data how MBAs are one of the worst ROI for any graduate level degree. Masters in business administration. They have a horrible return on investment. Go look it up. You'll be able to find that article. Um, and so I would not spend any time on a master's in business administration. I wouldn't. Mm -hmm. You might as well just go get a pile of money and light it on fire. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. I'm not kidding you. Listen, if you want to get in and lead people, and or at least if you want to get in and train people, there are ways to get trained to do that, certifications, work your way up the ladder. So that's the good news for you. You can get in now and start working your way up. You don't have to spend all that time getting a master's in business to be a great instructor, a trainer, a guide. All right, I got to get out of here. Remember this. You matter. You have what it takes. Press on. Thanks for listening to The Ken Coleman Show. For more, you can find the show on demand wherever you listen to podcasts and watch the show on YouTube. You can also find Ken across all social media by following at Ken Coleman.